Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. Welcome to my flooring trade tips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install your own luxury vinyl click flooring. The products and tools you're going to require are vinyl, set square, moist detector, trimming knife, roller, tape measure and pencil, spacers, rubber mallet, a claw hammer, a pulling bar, a tapping block, a spirit level, underlay and duct tape. But first off, you're going to need to prepare your floor. Start by hoovering in the area to remove any debris, making sure it's clean and dust free. Also, check closely that there's no screws standing proud if it's a wooden floor. Make sure that the subfloor you're laying onto meets the humidity requirements advised by the manufacturer's instructions. Finally, place your spirit level around all areas of the floor to check to see if it's as level as possible, with no more than 3mm height variation over 1m in length. So the next stage is to roll out your underlay. Now when purchasing your underlay, do make sure that it is the correct type suitable for the flooring that you're using. It comes in two different colours, it has a black side and a blue on this, it's blue side down. And I'm just going to start off in the one corner, nice and tight up against the skirting board and then simply roll that out. I've got a couple of pieces of duct tape here just to kind of temporarily hold it flat and once I lay my floor and of course that will hold it into position. Now it's quite easy to trim down to size this, you can either use scissors uh, or a trimming knife will be fine to do it. I'm just going to pull it down and get it to almost crease in that corner there. And when you come to lay your second roll, again put up to the skating board on the edge of your room or the wall if there's no skating boards on and then you want to line that edge up you do not want it to sit on top and create a little lip of any sort just butt it up nice and flush roll your underlay out I'm going to pop a couple of little bits of tape just to hold it in position while I roll it out and then I'll run one continuous line of tape right the way across the joint for your last piece of underlay, repeat the process, put it tight up to the skirting board, trim it down to size and run a continuous piece of duct tape where the two edges meet. So I'm now at a stage where I want to set out where I'm putting my planks and it's very important where you lay the first plank because this dictates where the rest of them go throughout the room. Now of course you can start with a full plank and as with laying most floors, you'd start in the one corner, you would work your way across and keep starting again from that side, working your way across. So if I put a full plank here and I get my second plank, this of course would click in just like this. And as you can see, I've just got a small area here for my room for demonstration purposes. You at home are probably going to have a larger room than this. So you may start off with your first plank, your second plank, your third plank, and then by the time you come to your wall, you're going to need a cut in there. So that's no problem. You've come all the way across, you've measured it. You're going to allow five millimeters as an expansion gap. Now, as long as that last piece exceeds 200 millimeters, that complies to the manufacturer's recommendations on there. So we'd allow our five mil that ends, the five mil on the back and on here for when you do your cut. Once you've done your cut, you're going to be left with the off cut on here. Now, if that off cut is bigger than 250 millimeters, 300 millimeters, you can take that off cut back over to this side and that can be your first plank on your second row. It can start there and then another full plank, a full plank and so on. The off cut of the second row can then come down and be your third plank. And what that's going to achieve is a kind of a staggered joint effect, which is not a problem. It's perfectly fine to do it like that. However, with me having a very small area here for demonstrating purposes, I'm going to set it out a little bit different. And you can think about this for your own room at home. I'm going to start by measuring up a little bit like when you're doing floor tiles. 
measure up the length of your room and find out the centre point of it. 1,220 millimetres here. So I'm going to start with a joint right in the centre of my back wall here. Right in here. Again, it's just a dry run. And I'm going to trim a small piece off either end. As you can see, there's just maybe 60 or 70 millimetres either end. Them two bits will be wasted, which is fine. Then my second course, I'm just going to place this here at the moment, not click it together. I will find the centre of this plank. I'll make a little mark on it. I'll place it up to the joint here in the centre. And what that does is it gives me a size here of what plank I'm going to need. So I will measure that up, cut my plank, again remembering the 5mm expansion gap there. The off cut off that plank can now be used this end here. So it's minimising my waste. Of course there will still be a little bit to trim off the edge on every course all the way down, but that's perfectly fine. And then when we finished the method of setting it out this way, our joints are going to be quite symmetric and staggered across here. The centre of my room, my first course, the joint will be there. Likewise with my third, fifth and seventh course along there. And then same applies to my second course, which is a cut here and here, will be my fourth course and my sixth course. So that's the width of your room set out. Now you've got to consider the actual length of it as well. So what you need to do is work out the measurements of the length of your room and how many planks you're going to actually apply on here. Mine works out I'm going to be fitting nine full planks and then I'm going to be left with a cut. Now if I start here with a full plank, my cut is working out around about 70 to 80 millimetres, bearing in mind the five mil expansion gap again at both ends here, which is perfectly fine. What you don't want to do is when you're setting out, if you start with a full plank and work your way across, end up with a little small slither cut, 20 or 30 millimetres. One, it won't look very good, and two, it's not recommended to do that. So what you will have to do then is cut off a 50 millimetre strip all the way off the length of the first row of planks, which will take that small cut of 20 mil back up to about 70 mil, which will be perfectly fine. Measure your first planks and mark where the cuts are required. So I'm going to take my workbench, place my set square on my pencil mark, taking a sharp trimming knife, and I'm going to start to score the surface of the vinyl. Now I'm not going to press hard on my trimming knife at this point, I'm just going to scratch in the top to create a groove. And each time I slowly, carefully scratch my trimming knife blade through the vinyl, I'm getting a little bit deeper each time and then I can apply a little bit more pressure. The deeper I get, there's less risk of the blade sliding across. And then I'm ready to split my board. I'm going to bring it right to the edge of my workbench, put some pressure onto it here. That's where I want to cut it. One quick fast snap and it's done. Now you can start to lay the first two cut planks into position. If required, gently tap your pulling bar to help click the joints together. Then using your roller, apply some pressure over the top of all your joints before placing your spaces in the expansion gap around all outside edges. Once the first row is in place, start to install your second row, making relevant cuts where necessary, clicking the joints together and not forgetting your expansion gaps each end of the row. So that's my first two rows already fitted into place now. I've established the sizes I need to cut. I've clicked them together. I've used a roller and pressed across all the joints just applying some pressure on the top, making sure they're nice and secure. All my spaces are in now around the sides. I can just start cutting my planks and continuing forward. Now I've got a couple of off cuts of the vinyl here and I just wanted to show you closely how the click system works. Really simple. One board is fixed to the floor. The next one interlocks in give it a little bit of a wobble and it simply clicks down like that. Gentle tap, sometimes with the pulling bar and you've got a perfect smooth connection like that. Like you would when fitting most floors, you'd open two or three packets and take a plank out of each packet and spread them around evenly when laying them. Every now and again, if you look closely to these two planks, they're out of the same packet, but you can get a repeat in the actual pattern on there. But what you don't want to do is fit them 
side to side alongside each other. It's not a problem having the same pattern, of course, just spread them out evenly so you get a nice blend around the area that you're laying it in. Luxury Vinyl Flooring really is a quick and easy way to change the look and feel of almost any room. Please do check the full manufacturer's guidelines before attempting your installation, as some flooring products may require slightly different specifications. Now there are alternative ways of working out your cut sizes. For me, of course, I can simply click that in here, let it overhang, mark it up, allowing for my expansion gap and cutting it down. You at home, of course, will have a wall on here and can't do that. So I demonstrated earlier by just measuring with your tape measure across here and allowing your gap for your expansion. Alternatively, you can get your board that's going to fit in place, offer it up, spin that over like this, take it to the skirting board, pull it away a fraction to match the rest of your expansion gap, and then take your pen, allow it to sail over the existing panel here that's fitted into place, take your pen, mark it, on the back, then again on the side, and then transfer that mark across the front using your set square. And then your plank is marked up exactly where it needs cutting. Perfect. So now I come to my last row on here. And as we mentioned earlier, I was starting with a full plank, working my way across, my last one would need cutting. So I'm going to take a measurement of what I need on here. I'm 30. I'm square all the way along there. So I'm going to cut these down by taking a plank. This plank is already cut down now to my length on here to match in the way I have done all the way across there. I'm just going to take the length off it this way. I'm take another plank. I'm just going to draw my line on there where I need to cut off. I'm going to take this up onto my workbench. So I'm just going to place a plank on top of that one for a nice straight edge. And again, like the other cuts, I'm just going to softly score into the top of that vinyl taking my time so now I'm going to take that to the end of my workbench apply some pressure on the top of here and hopefully that should snap off and that is the piece that I need this will click together just like the rest of the floor you may need to take your pulling bar though and give it a gentle tap to secure the connection and not forgetting to roll over all the joints. So that's my last piece of vinyl now installed. What I need to do next is remove all the spaces from around the outside. So now all your spaces are moved, all that's left to do is cover the expansion gap and that's really easily done with a Scotia bead. These simply sit on top of the board, they're fixed to the actual skirting board so it allows the floating floor to move if it needs to. So that's my flooring now complete. Hopefully I've inspired you to install your own luxury vinyl flooring. If you're looking for more inspiration or want to watch some how-to videos or just want to know more about the products, why not visit the website flooringmountain.co.uk.